Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and you are very welcome to this video all about repotting a vanilla plant. So this is my vanilla plant. Vanilla is actually an orchid and I believe it's the only commercially used orchid that there is out there because we all know vanilla pods as something that we use to flavor ice cream and I think pretty much everything. But you can grow vanilla as a houseplant here in my part of the world. Now your chances of getting it to flower are slim, although the flowers are absolutely magnificent if you do manage to get them. But you can grow it as a attractive houseplant, climbing plant. So today we're going to repot this vanilla plant using a moss pole. Before we get into the repotting of this fantastic vanilla plant, I just want to wish you all a happy new year because we're very much on the cusp of the new year. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas as I did. And I guess I'm just uh, getting ready for the new year with this fantastic headdress I've put on, especially for your <laughs> benefit. <laughs> it's actually my stromante plant, but the way I've positioned myself, it just so happens it's there as a fantastical, perhaps more Mardi Gras headdress than New Year's. But anyway, a very happy New Year to you and thank you for spending this time with me. So today we're going to repot this vanilla plant and I feel that I need to give you a bit of backstory because you haven't seen this plant at all yet in any of my videos, yet I've had it for three years and there's a bit of a story behind it because this plant came to me as a cutting or to be more precise, six cuttings and the vanilla plant actually grows quite easily from cuttings. So a friend of mine, online friend in Belgium, sent me this cutting. Thank you very much, Eric, during lockdown. And if you will recall, well, certainly in this part of the world, during lockdown, the post went very, very slow because everybody was it, not going out of their house. So they were ordering loads and loads of stuff. And well, it was all a bit silly, but the post went really slow and this poor cutting spent three weeks in the post. Can you believe it? Three weeks between Belgium and Ireland for this to come to me. So when this kind of didn't turn up after a week, after two weeks, Eric was saying, well, you know, they're not going to survive because they were just cuttings, not rooted cuttings, just basically cuttings. And I was inclined to agree with him, never having grown a vanilla beforehand, but there was no way this poor plant could survive. So after the third week, the parcel turned up and I opened it and I couldn't believe how well these cuttings looked after three weeks in the dark with no water. <laughs> they just looked as plump as they would have been originally when Eric put them into the parcel. So I thought, well, you know, I need to pop these up and see, see where we go. Now, because they had been in the post for so long, I didn't want to make a video about it because I was kind of sure that they were going to fail, but they didn't. And lo and behold, um, here are the cuttings. Now, I do admit that I have kind of neglected them a bit. This is the original pot that they put, I put them in three years ago. They haven't been repotted. This poor plant is a climbing plant. It's got nothing to climb onto. And we can see it's producing healthy roots that are just kind of dangling there, not getting any moisture, not being able to grip on anything. But we're gonna fix all of that today because today we're going to repot this in a bigger pot, but also support it with a moss pole. Now, you probably know the coir poles that you can buy easily from garden centers. The things with the kind of hairy stuff all the way around. Now, that's all very well for something like a Monstera Deliciosa, where it's a very vigorous plant and it needs limited input in terms of moisture for the roots. But for something like this vanilla orchid, I feel that we need to do a little bit better. 
And what I'm going to use today is a moss pole. Don't worry, we'll go through all of this in a minute. But this is basically a plastic pole that I will fill with sphagnum moss, put it in the pot, pot the plant in the pot and attach it to the pole. And as the plant climbs up, it will cling into the moss that's on the inside of the pole and well, get nourishment for its roots if I put a little bit of liquid fertilizer in there and lots and lots of moisture. So hopefully within a short period of time, it will really get going and grow vigorously. So that's what we're at today. And before we get going, I guess the first thing we need to do is to take this plant out of its pot and I'm just going to pop it in here in a bowl of water and um, just let the roots soak there and to remove all of the medium. Now let's not break it now at this stage. We've gotten it this far. I don't know if you can see, but actually there are roots coming out the base of the pot. This poor thing has been in here for too long. And look at this enormous, enormous root here that's uh, just coming out of one of the stems. It's, so it's actually an aerial root. It's not something that would be in the pot, but it's desperate to find somewhere to attach on to. And it's not, it's not getting that at all from this pot. It's actually a bit difficult to remove. And you know what? I think I might just soak it here like that in the water for a little bit and then it should be easier to remove in a minute. These long plastic pots, small long plastic pots are invaluable for things like Deezus. So that is a plastic pot I really don't want to damage. Okay, so while that is stewing, let's go about making our moss pole. So this is an interesting view. You're seeing my reflection in the table and I am making up my moss pole. Now, this is the moss pole kit that I bought. And you can actually make moss poles yourself just with like chicken wire or preferably chicken wire that's coated in plastic, something that's coated in plastic. But I'm not very good at DIY, so I actually bought this kit. It came in this box and it came as plastic like this sheets of plastic so the first thing I need to do is remove one of my segments of moss pole here and place it here like this with the biggest end at the top and this pole gets assembled by folding so I'm going to fold in this section here keeping this one flat and fold in this section here. So I'm going to have a pole that's flat on one side and rounded around the back. You can make a completely rounded pole if you want. And with a completely rounded pole, what happens is that you have like holes all the way around. And that's ideal in places where there's more humidity. In places of less humidity, a non-perforated um, back is ideal. So then I just curve it round like this and try to slot these yolks through the holes. And then I need to make sure that they're slotted through all the way so they kind of snap. Come on, snap. That one doesn't want to yet. Let's try at the end here. Come on. There we go. Well, snapped on one side. Come on. So there we go. And these come in segments, so you can actually just slot them together. I have two here already, and you can just kind of slot this in like that. It actually happens quite easily. There we go. So now I have three segments slotted together. However, I don't need three segments for this vanilla plant because it is not very tall at the moment. And I'm just wondering how many I do need. 
I have a pot here that I'm going to use so the pole will go into the pot with the perforated side uh, on the inside for the plant to attach to. It goes right down to the base of the pot and I think for my vanilla plant I am going to need maybe two, two segments. So let's just take off the top segment and just work with this. Now, I mentioned that this is going to be full of sphagnum moss. So I guess we had better prepare that sphagnum moss. Whoops. And I am going to use, I'm just gonna moisten up some sphagnum moss. So the sphagnum moss I'm using today and the orchid potting mix for my vanilla, both come from Cybotanica, which is a wonderful Dutch, company that provides the most glorious sphagnum moss and you know what they even have kits to make up these poles if you're thinking of doing it yourself um, and you can of course grow a multitude of uh, climbing plants up a moss pole but we'll come on to that in later videos for today we're just dealing with my vanilla plant and here is the uh, moss I like their new packaging. It's flat at the bottom so that you can stand them up easily on your shelf. Just going to put some uh, sphagnum in here. I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to need to fill the two segments of my pole. The idea is to put it in there compactly, but not too compactly. So. And if you want to use Cybotanicus potting mixes, then there is a discount code of 5% down in the details of my video below. Now, you would need to moisten this very slightly, which why I have a jug of water. However, this feels kind of moist to me, but I think it's because I was uh, storing it in the greenhouse and you know, things are cold out in the greenhouse and when anything is cold in temperature, it feels moist. So <laughs> maybe it's not moist, it's just my fingers misinterpretation of what cold means. So I put a little bit of uh, moisture in here with the, with the jug, with the water in the jug, just break up the sphagnum a bit and make sure it's all not compacted, nice, nice and fluffy and light and everything. A little bit more water maybe. Oh, this job's gonna get messy. <laughs> right, so now I take my sphagnum pole. Now I take my moss pole, which currently has no moss in it and so what we want to do is put the moss into the pole, obviously. I think I might need a spoon or something, and, but not right down to the bottom. So this is actually going to go into the pot. So up until here should be filled with the mix, the orchid mix, because you don't want that much sphagnum right down in the pot. It's just going to get saturated and hold water and maybe rot the roots that are in the pot. So we need mix down there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight segments and moss at the top. So I guess start trying to put it in. So here we have a wooden spoon and I'm just going to push the moss down. Oh yeah, that's much better. Now the bits where the sections where the plastic overlaps, I'm not sure how you're supposed to secure that. I have seen people use tie wraps on um, videos on YouTube 
but mine seems quite secure and I'm not quite sure that I need anything but if I do then I can always secure them a little bit later on well if I push the moss in move over there vanilla from this side down through the first segment and then through the other side down through the second segment that should surely work well okay nearly here with this lot it from the other end but I must clear out the eight sections like one two three four eight holes down at the bottom just to make sure that they are empty to take the orchid mix so let's put this in in you go this really is nice sphagnum moss big fan and I've seen some people on YouTube use other substances in the moss pole, but you know, sphagnum moss really is the best for your plant. Um, so like, if you're bothering to grow something, why not just give it the best? That's, well, if you can access it, if you can get the sphagnum. Okay, right, so how many of these sections? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another two, I have to up of course I had absolutely no idea how much sphagnum this job would take when I was ordering but I think those bags actually hold quite a lot because this is a kind of live sphagnum moss it's not the dry stuff so but quite fluffy and expandable okay I think, I think that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, a tiny bit more, just there. Okay, right, that's that. It feels quite top heavy, but uh, <sighs> We'll sort that out in a minute right so that's the sphagnum i can just put that over here and um now i'll have a go at maneuvering my oops my vanilla plant out of its pot again so just squeezing the sides of the pot to kind of loosen everything as much as it can be loosened and last time around when I potted this up I think I used a mixture of like large orchid bark 50% and sphagnum moss 50% but this time around I have one of the Cybotonica ready-made orchid mixes which will do it better I think but here we go okay and you know what that is a decent enough root system. It's fantastic. Lots and lots of white roots. Let's just put it in here and kind of um, see if I can kind of separate them. I don't want to damage these roots, but as you will recall, these are six cuttings. And I am actually going to plant all six cuttings in the same pot. And the reason for this is that you know you might think that that's too much and even though it's quite a large pot i'm using what you have to also consider is that the moss pole with the sphagnum in it is actually an extension of the root system so the roots will go down into the pot and fill it up but as the plant climbs and adheres to the moss pole it makes new roots that will go in here and completely fill the moss with with themselves with the roots so um the moss pole is an extension of the root system an extension of the pot so 
it's not a very small pot at the end of the day it's quite a large pot if you consider the height of the moss pole and of course as the plant expands and grows and fills up further I will extend the moss pole by adding another another segment on now I just want to separate these even though they're going in the same pot just so I can arrange them a little bit better and they're not all in one lump now I wonder if some of them have a lot of roots and others don't but we will see that in a short amount of time I will place this on the table and put the bowl of water over here uh, here we can see um, there is a vanilla cane that actually rotted down here but it produced a root from above the rot so we're talking pretty robust <laughs> plants <laughs> three weeks in the dark without water and then um, being planted too deeply and still they managed to survive and then not being repotted for three years oh there are mad things happening here right i wonder if i can show you so this cutting here uh, is all of its roots i haven't really untangled yet so here's the cutting and you can see um it's kind of gone yellow where it was underneath the uh the mix and it has produced leaves and it's produced aerial roots but it also produced an aerial root right here which went into the medium down below and became a terrestrial root so this is exactly the same process that i hope will be happening when i plant this in the pot with the moss pole that the roots will go into the moss through the holes in the pole and just be so so happy there's the original cutting i don't know if it branched in my care or if it came branched i think it probably branched in my care we've got roots here we've got aerial roots up higher we have some leaves we have this aerial root that went down no that one was just an aerial root but this aerial root here went down into the medium and produced all of this healthy root here and we did have one and we did have this root here down below the soil level which has done its own thing as well so i think what i'm going to do now is i don't think i'll bother untangling the rest of the roots but I will remove the bits that have rotted. So that bit of cane has rotted and off it comes. And I did see some root here that was damaged. So here's some root here and come off. And I think that apart from that, we have a fairly healthy looking root system. Again, here we have a bit of cane below the surface of the soil that's rotted. I think I'm just going to cut. Uh, can you see that there? So here we have the cane that was below the surface. It has sprouted roots from here and the bit below the surface is going yellow. So I'm going to cut off that yellow bit, put it there. And likewise with this bit as well, cut off the yellow bit because presumably it will rot in the end. It's not going to produce roots now and we will do the same with the cutting we've just analyzed take that off what about these other guys yeah so here making sure not to cut any segment with roots on and there's another one in here somewhere where are you there you are yeah that's where i produced the roots well that one's firmer than the others but it is yellowing so okay right so the next step is to take my pot which i've 
washed out well and scalded, I hope well enough. And my orchid mix. And this orchid mix is from Cybertonica, as I mentioned already, and it includes activated carbon, coconut husk chips, orchid bark, sphagnum moss, and organic nutrients, which sounds good to me. And I am going to open it up. And so what I need to do now is to get mix into the base of this pole. Which is fun and games. Oh, so, so messy. Oh, do you hear it falling on the floor? Ah, I have to get the hoover out afterwards. Okay, now the tricky bit is how do we do this? So, put it in the pot like this and turn it upright. Whew. Now what I'm going to do is to just put some of the mix at the base of the pot, kind of stabilize the whole thing a little bit. And we want to stabilize the pole as much as possible. So I'm gonna put a little bit of mix behind the pole. Not too much because I want the pole to be at the back of the pot. Another trick I heard about was to just angle the pole ever so slightly backwards and that'll help it be that bit more stable. The thing about plastic of course as well is that it's not going to rot even though it's containing wet things or moist things. So here are my six cuttings and these ones well, these are five and they're not separated. So I'm going to just kind of put them in here like that to start with. Now I'm keeping them to the front of the moss pole because as you'll recall, this is the side that's open and it has like holes with the moss in there that they can root into. They can't root around the back. And by having nothing at the back, that's an advantage because if you're plant goes around the back as well it can be difficult to find enough space for it because kind of it, it, it becomes very much more three-dimensional than if you just have it rooting on one side now I don't mind that these are all going to be jostling for position because it means I'm going to have a dense plant and I much prefer something that's nice and leafy than something that is very sparse looking. <laughs> Look at this one, I've attached it so it's actually out of the pot. Let's put it a little bit lower. That's no good. We want those roots to go in, into the base if they want to, if they can. Now I'm attaching these on with the clips at the moment, but I understand that over time you won't need to do that even because the um, the plant itself will just will just root into the the moss and this one is very awkward so just gonna thread him through there and across there well maybe that's enough okay now Put some more mix in. come down again just stay up oh I see it's a, a branched uh, branched one so I think without I will just clip it to this other um, vanilla there another one of the other cuttings 
and then maybe my top here I can attach into the pole and ta-da here we have my vanilla all repotted and attached to the moss pole and I will now give it a good watering down below and this comes to a really interesting point to do with maintaining something on a moss pole like this because you may wonder might it not rot because you've got sphagnum up here that's moist and that'll feed down into the medium at the bottom and surely that means that the roots will get too wet and they'll the roots that are down the base and they'll rot over time but apparently the trick is after repotting you water the base once but ever after then you don't water the pot what you do is you water the moss pole at the top so this sphagnum needs to remain moist for the vanilla to want to go and root in it so you need to keep this moist and I believe you can do that with just like a plastic bottle with some holes punched in the lid just place it there for an hour or so and it trickles down and you should be able to see from the change in the color in the sphagnum how far the water has gone down the aim of course being that all of the sphagnum here remains moist and that will trickle down into the pot here at the base as well and keep this sufficiently watered for the purposes of growing on the moss pole. I will just point out one thing before I go any further and it's a little mistake I've made here now. So if we turn this around you can see that my moss pole is a bit out from the edge of the pot and I couldn't push it back again anymore so in so doing I think I might have lifted the pole a little bit which probably meant that the mix that was in the base came out a bit and then it made it difficult to maneuver back but it's not the end of the world some people grow plants up moss poles with the moss pole in the center of the pot it's just I guess that the design of this one which is um, flat on one side lends itself more easily to kind of being up against the edge of the pot and you have more more um, uh, more space of course the further back you put your pole well you have the same amount of space anyway as long as the pole is in there I think the pole is securely enough down at the base and as time goes on this should all solidify and become quite stable I have heard that the best thing to do is to put your plastic pot into a ceramic heavier outer pot and that will just help stabilize the whole thing further and I have seen people lift up these plants by the pole and them not come out of the base but you know what I'm not going to do that we're going to just um, be grateful that it's worked out quite well I think perhaps if I were doing it again I wouldn't bother to try and untangle the roots in the way that I did because I did break one of the roots off and there's no real advantage because if you've untangled them then you're stuffing them together, together again to put them into the pot. Just clip off any bits that are looking a bit rotty and you can do that without untangling them. So yeah, okay. So this is my vanilla on a moss pole. I just want to put a little clip on here because I see this root and I just I just want to say go into the sphagnum do you know what's good for your root go into the sphagnum there there he's happy now <laughs> right I hope you enjoyed this video on repotting a vanilla plant and using a moss pole to do so moss poles are my new favorite thing and i will have some exciting videos coming up soon where i use moss poles for other plants that aren't orchids and hopefully get into that giant leafed philodendron thing that is so rampant on social media at the moment i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you had a wonderful christmas i hope you have a fantastic new year and that you will come back to the channel after all the celebrations renewed and fighting fit and dying to see what's going on with new plants and um, yeah and get those wish lists going again right thanks for watching bye